Hello everyone. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, it's a beautiful day out there. Uh, it's uh, election day and it's the day we've kind of been looking forward to and sort of maybe not looking so forward to, but uh, it's here. Uh, people are, I voted here a little while ago this morning and uh, uh, we're just going to put it all in the Lord's hands. I, I was thinking about what to share today and I uh, received an e email from uh, Outreach Magazine uh, it, it's something I, I receive regularly from them, and, and uh, I, I thought I would just share it with you. Uh, like I said, I, I heard uh, a statistic yesterday that said that 77% of people are concerned uh, about violence because of the election. And, uh, uh, you know, one way or another, no matter what happens, uh, there's concern for, for violence. I saw uh, even in, in Indianapolis downtown, they were boarding up windows and in other places as well. Uh, they were boarding up windows, and and uh, that's that's a concern. I mean, it is a concern. It, it, it's a cause for for uh, anxiety, for worry. Uh, but but we have to keep looking to the Lord, and we keep have to coming back to Him, and and that's part of why uh, we've been doing this series on wisdom uh, daily, as well as uh, uh, you know the, through the Sundays uh, as well. We need wisdom of how to navigate. In turbulent times, and so, so today I, I I came across this article, and I thought it was a good one to uh, uh, to share. It was uh, put out yesterday, but uh, the the title of it is "No matter what happens after the election, hold on to these five truths." And so here are five things that uh, are good reminders, I think, on this election day, and uh, just something for you to keep in mind uh, to to. Uh, uh, encourage you, I think. Uh, that's just the, the idea I think I, I, you know, I want to just say is that just, just to encourage you, the Lord's still in control. He's still on the throne, no matter what happens. Uh, no matter what, you know, if we know tonight or tomorrow or whenever we find out who our next president is going to be or even some of the other offices that we might be worried about, we're just going to trust the Lord no matter what, put it all in his hands. And uh, But here, here it is, uh, five Five reasons, no matter, you know, five, hold on to these five truths, no matter what. Number, well, I, I'll begin. It says elections matter. They matter a great deal. But no matter what happens after November 3rd, 2020, I want to remind you of five truths of far greater importance than who is elected to office. Uh, by the way, this is by a gentleman named uh, Jason uh, Jimenez. I don't know him, but uh, like I said, it was, uh, it's part of this outreach magazine, a Christian publication that I get and thought this was pretty good. Uh, so back to this. I want to remind you of five truths of, of far greater importance than who is elected to office. I hope that as you read these truths, you will find your heart and mind settled on the simple fact that God is sovereign and his divine plans will not be thwarted. First truth, God is primary. Political party is secondary. What matters more than anything is to be with the Lord. Paul reminds all Christians, our citizenship is in heaven and from it we await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians 3.20 your final destination needs to be your primary focus, not, not mostly on the expectations you have on temporary matters. That doesn't mean you don't care about the affairs of the world. It may, it's making sure that you don't let what happens in the world politically cause you not uh, to affect change spiritually. Uh, I, I like that. God is primary. Our political party is secondary. We first look to the Lord. We first find our hope, our peace, everything in Him. Uh, and then, uh, you know, not that, those, not that political parties don't matter, but uh, God does matter. We know that. Uh, there, it, he is of primary concern. Second truth, you do not unite under a political figure, but are united in the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, the natural thing to do if your candidate doesn't get enough votes is to slip into depression. But instead of fixating on the repercussions of your candidate not winning, be reminded that Christ came into this world to save you from sin and death. In the end, you might have to pay higher taxes, but be encouraged that you are united with Christ in his resurrection. Romans 6, 4-5. That, that's what's most important. Adopted into his sonship, Galatians 4, 5, and have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heaven, Ephesians 1, 3. That's what matters most. Not, not what political figure is in place uh, but that we have been saved by, by Christ, by his di dying on the cross for us. And so that, that's our comfort. That's our hope. Uh, that's where we look to in, in these difficult days. Third truth, it's your faith that defines you, not politics. 
Politics has become a religion for many people, but it shouldn't be for Christians. Your political party may win or lose, but that doesn't de determine the outcome of your faith. John affirms, he says, For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. 1 John 5, 4. Keep engaging the culture with the gospel despite who's in the White House. We keep living uh, with Christ on our throne, the throne of our hearts, no matter what happens, no matter who's in the White House or uh, in the Senate or the House or any other office. All of that's secondary. What defines us is, is the Lord, our, our desire to be like him, to follow him above all, uh, not our politics. Fourth truth, the Bible is your standard not your political views, uh, your standard of living. So after the election, your governor, senator, or even the president may not be a person who holds the same beliefs that you do. Uh, if that's the case, make it a priority to pray for them and take comfort in the fact that they are not your standard of how you live. They are not your savior. Only Jesus is your savior. So the Bible teaches you how you ought to live. So no matter what policies are legislated in your, in your state or your country, or the country, keep turning to the, the word of God for direction and solace. We keep looking to him. We keep looking to God's word. We, we live according to the standard of that, uh, no matter what, no matter what comes down, no matter, uh, you know, not, it doesn't, our, our political values, our, our political views uh, are not equal to our Christian values. Uh, not, you know, the Bible is our standard. The Lord is our standard. We keep looking to him. Fifth truth, spend more time with Jesus than listening to political leaders. I, I like this one. Uh, this is before reading this last truth, check your screen time first. How many hours did you spend on your phone already today? Or how much TV or YouTube did you consume in the last week? The point is you can get so bombarded by the endless news clips, segments, and points of view that it can bring you to a breaking point. It's good to stay informed, but not at the expense of spending time of not spending time with Jesus. And I, I think that's so true. I mean, it... it you need to be aware. You need to dig into, uh, you know, the political things. It's good to watch the returns as they come in tonight. It's good to, you know, be be aware and of those things. But but just don't be so consumed with them. Uh, and I love the idea. Of spend more time with Jesus than listening to political leaders. So we we listen to more of what Jesus has to say to us than what the political leaders or or the. Uh, you know, different different people in the media are telling us, or Facebook, or any of those things. We don't. We spend more time with Jesus. Uh, that's how we'll know peace, uh, especially in, in in you know this difficult day and seventy seven percent expected violence and all that. Uh, we're just going to look to the Lord and allow Him to speak to us and and uh, meet us in our place of need. Uh, it says here, you will find that the more you cultivate time with Jesus, the healthier you will be to counteract the falsehoods espoused in the culture. Uh, or, or any way, any way that we need to deal with the issues going on in our in our world, we we need to. The more time we spend with Jesus, the more we cultivate our relationship with Him, the better off we'll be to to handle uh, whatever whatever comes our way. And I, I think that's a good word for us on this uh, uh, on this day. Of uh, well, we hope it, it brings unity. We hope it brings peace. Uh, we hope that as we move forward, we'll move forward together and uh, find find common ground and and uh, be able to find uh, a place of peace. We know that uh, the division and the the violence and you know all that none of that's the, that's not the answer. That's not God's answer uh, for any of us. He doesn't want that for us in our life, and and He doesn't want it in our culture, in our in our nation. If we want to be a godly nation, which which I'm not so sure we are anymore. We, we're, we're still built on the foundation of Christ. Uh, our, our founding fathers, you know, I, I think put that in place. But, but our culture has gone away from the Lord. And, we, and we, that's what we need to pray about. We need to pray for, for salvation to come to those that don't know the Lord. And salvation to, to uh, well, just a recognition of our need of grace, of forgiveness. Uh, we turn to the Lord in in this time of need, and uh, He'll He'll bring healing to our land if we we do that. If we turn to our knees in humility and and seek out the Lord, uh, that's what we need to do. So so this day, just let me encourage you to to again just spend time with the Lord, spend time in His Word. Uh, I saw on Instagram yesterday several people had put uh, 
a list of things to do to keep your mental health. And I, I thought some of those were good, but but some of them were, were kind of worldly as well, just, just in different ways. And, and I, I just thought, you know, it's really more simple than that. Just uh, build on your foundation of the Lord. Let, let the Lord be your, your, your foundation in this uh, day and age. And he, he will. He'll be faithful. Uh, no matter what happens tonight or tomorrow or whenever, uh, we'll be okay in the Lord. So, so let's just pray together and uh, as we uh, uh, wrap up today. Lord, help us. Have mercy upon us, Lord. We don't know what's going to happen tonight uh, in this election as the numbers are, as the ballots are, are counted and the numbers come in. And Lord, we, we just put it in your hands and we just ask that whatever happens, uh, that your will would be done here on earth as it is in heaven. We ask that you will help us if our candidate loses or if our candidate wins, that you will help us to be people of you, people of truth, that our citizenship is in heaven, not in this earth. And to just just hold on to that, no matter what happens, uh, we'll we'll thank you ahead of time, Lord. We just thank you for how you work in our hearts and our lives. And Lord, be with each one today as they vote. And and to, I know so many have already voted, but we just put all of this in your hands and uh, just just pray for your blessing on our nation, that you would draw us closer to you, that you would help us to to be your people. And we want to be a Christian nation again. And we. We uh, ask for forgiveness where we failed you in that. But Lord, just draw us closer to you and, and bring about revival uh, in our land. I know we need that. Uh, be with the leaders of our country, Lord. We just ask your blessing on them and just help us. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for watching today and have a great day. Hopefully we don't all have to stay up too late tonight, but uh, uh, we'll see and, and try to spend more time today with Jesus than, than you do with the, the media and the news and all that stuff. But have a great day and we'll, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. We'll come back with something else. Uh, have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.